Everyone, this is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition Session 3D. Who would have thought when we started this in April that it will go so long and now it's the 30th member of our ecosystem who we are introducing. Uh, now, what are these conversations about? Um, the Future Food Institute has been running multiple educational programs in the past and uh, during these sessions we are basically giving voice to everyone who graduated from any of these programs to see how um, how they joined um, uh, future food um, during these and what was their story and what happened after they graduated uh, what kind of educational programs am i, uh, am I talking about uh, ciao alessandro ciao ciao, ciao. Hello. i just quickly do the intro and then we can go on with you so we have a different educational programs. I myself is a, uh, I'm a graduate of the Food Innovation Master Program. Uh, the Institute also had summer schools in the past. And recently we started um, a collaboration with FAO in a form of uh, food and climate shaper boot camps. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, alert. Uh, we are actually starting a second edition of the digital boot camp at the end of the month. So I highly encourage everyone to visit our website and apply. And um, why is it good that we have Alessandro today on this session? Because he actually is a graduate of both the digital and the in-person bootcamp, uh, what we had in Polika in September, the only in-person bootcamp we could actually keep um, this year. So uh, I would like to ask everyone to uh, post questions in the chat. I will make sure that we will find time to answer them. Otherwise, obviously, I prepared the set of questions, as always. And uh, well, without any further ado, I would like to hand over to Alessandro Fusco. <laughs> Hello, ciao. Hello to everyone. And uh, I'm very happy to be here <laughs> in this Food is a Conversation uh, talks. <laughs> Very good. So where are you based, uh, Alessandro? Well, I'm based uh, in Milan, and, but now I'm, Bolo I'm in Bologna. <laughs> uh, I'm traveling across uh, Italy also, but yeah. <laughs> I think we will talk about this um, yes. you know, the conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I already told uh, the audience that you, you uh, participated on the boot camps this yeah. year. Um, so what is the story? How did you come across the Food and Climate Shaper Boot Camps and uh, what was your journey to join our ecosystem? <laughs> well, um, I think that the, the starting point uh, uh, was the, the, the consciousness to, to create an impact, to design a, a sustainable future um, uh, within the food and beverage system. And um, and this consciousness also uh, matches with the future food um, goals and SDG goals. And uh, I can say thanks to the digital and Polica bootcamp and also the future food network, I, I moved uh, important steps uh, to to become uh, um, a food and climate shaper. Uh, and so I, and I think that uh, it's. Um, the network, Future Food Network, is a, a, a good place, a safe place where to learn, innovate, share, connect uh, with uh, other uh, people, other global and local actors. And, um, and also, I, um, I think that it is the right place to, to innovate the food ecosystem because we should start to, to, to connect all, all the actors uh, along the supply chain. I cannot agree more. Yes. And, and yeah, I'm very happy to hear from you that another digital bootcamp is, is starting. So <laughs> very good. Yeah, there will be many, many more climate shapers graduating <laughs> soon. <laughs> so um, Alessandro, you are also a part of the ecosystem. Like, let's be honest, everyone on this planet is part of the food system because at least they are consuming. But on the other hand, besides being part of the Future Food Network, you also have your little take on um, how to be part of this. And that's through your startup, Vine Hope. Would mm -hmm. you mind telling us the story behind the, the company and what are you exactly doing? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that the first thing that I would like to, to highlight is that uh, um, the, the main, the most important characteristics to 
to start uh, and to a startup, sorry, the, the word, and to embrace uh, uh, an innovative solution is um, adopt a flexible mindset, uh, uh, passion, and uh, perseverance uh, and dedication, of course. And um, so the vision um, behind Wayloop is to offer well lovers uh, a, a unique analogical experience. And uh, we, um, we, we would like to, to highlight the work of winemakers. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we discover each, every month, we discover um, different small uh, Italian um, uh, wineries and we, we, we talk about them. And uh, we, we select also uh, little uh, Italian wineries that uh, uh, are oriented uh, towards uh, sustainable vineyards and native grapes. Because we, we think that uh, the, the territory uh, and, uh, need to be uh, preserved and the winemakers as, as farmers, um, they, uh, have and they, they, they should preserve the, the territory and they they do a great work and so also uh, each one each one maker um, that we we met uh, tell us about the, the the hard work behind each bottle of wine and first of all the, the first work is to preserve the soil and the nature because with, without planet we we don't have wine and food, of course. <laughs> so, first of all, we should um, uh, highlight the, this kind of uh, um, uh, best practice, sustainable best practice. And we, so, uh, we, 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 what we do is to offer so an experience. Why? Because we, uh, we, we call it emotional testing moment. <laughs> because uh, um, we have we designed. Um, uh, a flow where we we ask from uh, wine lovers to to to, to taste um, the wine of these winemakers and to to watch the video documentary that uh, we have designed for them. So uh, the emotional testing moment, moment uh, for us is to uh, drink the wine, uh, listen the story behind each bottle, be, this, the philosophy uh, of the winemaker and uh, enjoy time and because uh, and, and other, another pillars that we would like to, to highlight is to enjoy good quality time, enjoy people, enjoy uh, the nature and uh, promote uh, Italian agronomic uh, heritage also. It sounds like a very fun job to do, travel around Italy, find new vineyards and so on. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> but if, um, because you talk to so many uh, winemakers, um, would you mind telling me what is their biggest challenge at the moment? Hmm. Yeah, they, they have a lot of challenge, of course. And um, uh, they, they we, we, we call it us, and also they highlight that they are the guardians so, of the territory. And to do this, uh, kind of, of, of job, not kind of, to do this job, um, every day uh, they should understand the climate, they should understand the nature, they should, um, they should be a unique flow with nature, okay, they should taste the grape, and uh, so the main challenge is to, uh, an everyday challenge is to listen the weather, listen the, the territory, the, the terroir, in France, yeah. uh, and um, this is the main challenge because also um, they 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 start to uh, to 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 to, to har the, the harvest uh, um, one month um, before then. Yeah, uh, typically they, they they start to at the end of August, October, September. Uh, sorry, at the end of September. October, but now in some part, in some region of Italy, uh, they started at the end of August, uh, at the beginning uh -huh. of September. So they they should adapt uh, their their work, they um, very old habits, 
and uh, yeah. in a new way. You definitely, so. definitely have to be resilient um, yes. in the yes. current times. So if you look at the, the boot camps, um, the mm. one, the digital one and also in the in-person one, what were the main takeaways of what you, what you gained and how could you apply these takeaways in your, in your life mm -hmm. with Vinehope? Uh, this is a very important question and it's very difficult also because there are a lot of takeaways. Well, I hope it's not because you didn't have takeaways. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of takeaways, but um, my, my favorite takeaway and, and also I think that we, I can apply it not only in, during the wine up, wine up life, but also in uh, also my, my life and uh, is the, the concept of dormant resources. Mm -hmm. The dormant resources uh, are the resources that uh, are visible, but uh, um, they, they, we cannot see. If we, we, we can see these resources, if we adopt um, spontaneity, we embrace a risk, we understand the context, uh, we see the world as a, uh, as a child. Uh, if we train uh, ourselves to active listen, we can start to see the resources uh, that are here in our context, but they are, uh, let me say, invisible. And food waste, food waste is a, uh, is a, um, a good example, I think, uh, of dormant resources because uh, uh, is here is around us and we throw away a lot of things uh, but uh, we can reuse uh, the, the food waste in another way so this is a resources for example uh, that is here and we feel if, if, if we innovate if we apply uh, our um, uh, our mindset, our our techniques, our design, our design methods, our um, uh, our our, mind, our our flexible mindset, we can reuse them, and so uh, they became value, you know, from waste to value. Yes. That was one of my takeaways, but I actually video recorded at the end of the bootcamp. So I think Professor Lorenzoni definitely made a really good yeah. um, impact on all of the all of the participants. And um, so if you think about Polika, we went to these experiences and we had the chance to go and see how anchovies, uh, more specifically Alici di Menaica, was uh, produced and so on. So how was this experience for you? Um, is that something that you can also incorporate in, in Vine Hope and the, in the offers what you will have in the future? Yeah, I think it was a great experience. And uh, <laughs> uh, we were in the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, and we, we met um, Victor, Vittorio, the, the fisherman. <laughs> and um, yes, it, it was a great experience because we not only we met people that uh, are part of uh, uh, some food, but because the the philosophy behind. Uh, their, their work is um, be sustainable, uh, take your time, understand the context, uh, 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 understand the, the, the sea, in this case, as the winemaker understand the grape and the vineyards and also and the soil. Uh, so understand the, the sea and um, take your part, let me say, take your part from the sea, but let also the future, uh, let other fishermen, let other generation to, to enjoy, let me say, the, the sea and the, um, the resources from the sea. So because uh, also the winemaker, uh, every day they, they, they change the nature because also the vineyards, uh, let me say, they, they force the vineyards to, to, to go up because the vineyards uh, from, from nature they uh, instinctively they they go they uh, they go on the land, mm -hmm. okay. But they they for they force them to go up, and, uh, and so I think I I learned that uh, uh, that uh, we, we we should 
yeah, understand the context. I think that understand the context uh, each time uh, it's very, um, it's, it's a precious uh, resource. Yeah, I do agree. Um, we had this conversation previously about innovation in as such um, and how um, you can be innovative if you find an already existing solution and take it to another context yet it doesn't mean that you will be able to replicate it one to one because you will have a completely different environment so you always need to see what elements of a certain solution can be um, applicable and adapted to to a certain context uh, my favorite examples are um, soilless farming practices. I think they are extremely beneficial in places where you do not have land to grow, fertile land. But where you have fertile land, I might agree with the fact that you can also just use the soil and regenerate it and actually actually use that for the purpose of uh, growing food. Um, Definitely. Yeah. So during both boot camps, boot camps, you actually had an experience of a hackathon. I know that you participated in, in previous hackathons before, um, but how, if someone would ask you is interested to join a boot camp, how was that experience for you, especially the digital one where you were online uh, with the participants and then you had a very diverse group from all over the world? How, how was that for you? Yeah, um, uh, I think that the value is the diversity and uh, um, listen and met people all around the world. I think that this is, we can see it as an opportunity. So uh, let me say the, this big digital hackathon uh, is an opportunity to, to meet uh, people that have a different mindset from, uh, from ours because they are uh, from another part of the world, uh, different, uh, probably different background, knowledge. And if we mix this uh, knowledge, if we mix these, um, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these values, we can create new value. And so we can, we can innovate in this way. So I think that, yeah, mix uh, people from around the world is uh, one of the big value that we can, uh, we can find it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, I keep thinking now that we are talking about all these experiences, I just remembered our climate supper. And, uh, well, I must say, Alessandro, you really nailed it that time because you even changed location to make a scenery <laughs> there with the garden lake and everything. Exactly. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, I am very um, happy that we could actually experiment with these digital tools to see how to bring multiple people from all over the world around one virtual table to, to discuss um, sustainability in, in our food system. Um, so yeah, that was for me also one of the, one of the great experiences. Um, yes, and, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, yes, and uh, I think another value is, uh, uh, are the stories, uh, because you can meet people that have so, so many stories. And I think the stories are one of also, uh, one of the pillar of WENUP also, because, uh, we, um, uh, all of us, uh, we are fascinated by stories. We are attracted by stories. We like stories, and um, what we are, so what we do also is, is to tell the stories uh, as um, a ring is as con conjunction. No, <laughs> it's a I'm new word. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a new word, but it's to create the, the direct connection between the. Um, not con I don't like the word consumer. I, I would I like the word human people. Uh, when lover and uh, and and when maker and um, yes and we we like uh, uh, as Wayloopers and as co-founder of Wayloop uh, we I like story and we we like tell stories uh, because uh, are important we we can communicate uh, with data of course and we communicate uh, also with uh, stories yeah. So that brings us to actually the next question where you... Uh, okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so exactly. So this is very important how people, food, wine and everything is connected, maybe through stories, uh, maybe through other tools. Um, so could you maybe talk a bit about how do you see the power of storytelling in, in your situation? Yeah. Um... I think that I, I like the word storytelling because 
um, and what we do is not add something we can we not we do not uh, we cannot add the layer on, on the on winemaker so we let me say we put we bring the winemaker and we use their word his word they they word and we we offer the um, the landscape we we show the landscape we show the the hard work the, the soil we show the grapes and uh, we, we we want to create a direct connection. So so storytelling is for us is create a, a direct connection. Um, it is not adding something, but create a direct connection between actors. In our case, wine maker and and wine loggers. And um, and so for, to do this, we we have created. Uh, 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 testing cards. Uh, the testing cards uh, are are the gate for the immersive journey. So the wine lover uh, scan the, the QR code and drinking the wine, of course, and um, and they they can immerse uh, themselves uh, so in, into the video documentary uh, and the podcast. And uh, we think that this is the best way. To, to enjoy uh, to enjoy wine and uh, yes I, and and I think that uh, technology uh, this is very simple technology I mean I mean very simple because we would like to uh, uh, to, to, to arrive to uh, to talk with as much as possible people and so uh, we we think that the digital divide also is a uh, it's a challenge. So QR code, it's very um, QR code. It's very very simple. And so we, for this reason, we select this technology. But anyway, uh, technology, um, I've, technology, also innovation and uh, empathy. Um, I think that uh, these are the ingredients also for uh, for the future for the future of uh, food and uh, for the future of wine, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, these, um, yeah, these ingredients uh, should be mixed and combined. Yes. I think. I mean, right now, if we look around, we have so many tools to make our future, yeah. food future more sustainable yeah. and, and change all those uh, things what we have done over the past years, let it be intensification or... Yes, a lot yeah. of things what made us lost our biodiversity and, and a lot of things. Um, so we always um, finish with one final question. So that, that question is standard for everyone. And here I would like to encourage you, you can think out of the box. Like it can be an utopistic answer as well. But how do you see your preferred food future? How do you see the future? What is the future what you want to wanna still live? Okay, <laughs> and this is also a, a very good question. Um, in the, the, the future that I would like to see uh, is a future where global and local work all together, where, uh, where there is a, a direct and very strict connection between global and local. And um, also we... Um, uh, we, we saw this during also during the COVID uh, um, lockdown that uh, the, the, the local is very important, but also uh, if we think global as uh, a positive resources, positive resources uh, to help the local. Okay, um, I think that here in that moment uh, in this future we can create. And another value, okay. Uh, and in, in, my, in the future that I would like to see, um, uh, well, I would like to to see, oh, as I said before, so technology and innovation and empathy that help the actors uh, that uh, work on the on the food supply chain. Uh, this is also an important step uh, that uh, we see a lot of. Uh, uh, input stimulus and seeds, but uh, we are not today, but in the future, 
well, for sure, yes. Uh, we're not focusing on these pillars. Uh, this is uh, my point of view. This is uh, my <laughs> my two cents. That's what uh, you wanted to hear. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, um, so, Alessandro, if someone would like to um, see those uh, tasting cards, what you just mentioned, and would like to join the Vine Hoopers, how can they do that? Uh, is that currently only in Italy or is that everywhere in the world? So how, how is the process? Tell the people, help them to get the wine and taste from all those <laughs> guardians of their um, terroirs. <laughs> Terror. Yeah, uh, currently we deliver only in Italy, but uh, um, they, they can uh, also make, make a gift. So, uh, for example, uh, a Japanese girl uh, made a subscription for her friend in Italy. So, <laughs> yes. So, um, because we are a uh, um, subscription box, so each month um, you will receive uh, uh, one box with uh, two, two wines and two testing cards. And of course, two stories, um, uh, each one for, for um, for, for, for different uh, um, winery. And um, so it's very simple, subscribe, wait, and uh, enjoy, enjoy the box and enjoy the stories and the wine. Very good, very good. So thank you, Alessandro. It was a very yeah. insightful session. Yeah. I am very happy to showcase all these, all the climate shapers now and show how, what you can expect from the, from the next batch. And as I said, uh, we are currently recruiting the next um, cohort, uh, which we are starting on the 30th of October. So go on our website, Future Food Academy, and apply. Um, besides that, these conversations also happen twice a week. So you will see many, many more people talking about their experiences as uh, future fooders. And <laughs> um, you can also find the previous 29 sessions on our IGTV or the YouTube channel. So if you joined a bit later and you would like to listen to the conversation from the beginning, after we finish, I will, I will make sure that it's saved on IGTV. And uh, you can also connect to, to Alessandro through his um, Instagram account, Vine Hope. And the next conversation is on Thursday. That will be um, 8.30 a.m. Um, Central European time. So we always do one evening session and one morning session to cover the different uh, regions and time zones. And, um, and my colleague Jeff will uh, have the next conversation with someone who also graduated from both the digital and the uh, in-person bootcamp. So this is now a um, food and climate shaper overload uh, for the next few weeks. But I can guarantee you we have a few more alumni from the other programs as well. So, Alessandro, thank you again for your time. It was a thank pleasure. You. I hope to see you soon, either in Germany or in Italy, and we finally don't just miss each other uh, <laughs> in the towns. <laughs> Right. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Julia, and have a nice evening. See you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Ciao.